Today, we're going to be looking at the latest software being open sourced by EMC called RackHD. RackHD is a set of services used to provide platform agnostic management and orchestration of physical hardware. The project started because it seemed as you got closer to hardware, the less automated systems tend to become. There was also an inherent need to develop beyond some of the other similar tool sets to include the capability of performing firmware updates across your infrastructure. The provided REST APIs and live data feeds abstract the underlying physical components, enabling automated infrastructure for a varying degree of hardware, including white boxes. This project is a collection of libraries and applications that can be found at github.com slash rackhd. The combination of these services are intended to provide a REST API based service to do a few different things, such as install, configure, and monitor bare metal hardware, such as compute servers, PDUs, and DAEs for storage, and network switches, provision and erase a server's OS, install and upgrade firmware, monitor bare metal hardware through out of band managed interfaces, and also provide data feeds for alerts and raw telemetry from hardware. But before diving into it, it's the best to have a baseline of what is happening and perhaps some vernacular. From an administrative standpoint, there are tasks. Tasks are individual actions that can be performed, such as rebooting a node, installing an operating system, collecting SNMP data, and etc. We can take a series of tasks and combine them together to create a workflow, or sometimes commonly referred to as a graph. Now that we have a workflow, how does that get ran on a particular piece of hardware? This is where a SKU comes in. A SKU is a rule set that defines what workflow is attached when the hardware is discovered. For instance, if we know the board manufacturer is made by Intel and it has 32 gigs of RAM, then we're going to attach the install Ubuntu workflow. RackHD uses iPixie as the initial bootloader for booting machines. With the addition of BMC embedded on the server motherboard and using IPMI to communicate with BMC, RackHD can remotely power on, power off, and request Pixie boots and more. Discovery is performed when a machine requests a DHCP address and Pixie boots on a network that RackHD is monitoring. Once a new machine Pixie boots, RackHD sends the iPixie bootloader, retrieves its MAC address, and creates a new record if it doesn't exist. The iPixie script runs a microkernel to request a bootstrap script, which uses a simple REST API ask to invoke a workflow as determined by the SKU. The documentation and further reading about software architecture, user guide, and even contributing can be found at rackhd.readthedocs.org. Now let's get RackHD up and running in a test environment. The first thing to do is pull down all the repositories. We're going to do a git clone with the recursive tag to download all of the repos inside of the RackHD main repo. I have this done already. As we can see, we have all the underlying repos here for me. Within the directory example slash config, copy the monorail rack.config.example file into just a .config file. Within this Vagrant setup, we have the option to create as many Pixie boot servers as we want. I'm going to use VI to go and change my monorail rack config and set the Pixie count to 3. Within the bin directory, start the monorail rack script. This will bring up our Vagrant environment for us. This will take a few minutes, so we'll be right back. Now that the server is up and running, we can query the API with requests such as examining all the tasks available to us in the library. Some tasks that we can see are SNMP polling, node rebooting, message caches, out of band management settings, and more. We can also look at all the available workflows. Here we examine the install rail workflow that shows a series of tasks like Pixie boot, rebooting the node, and installing CentOS after the wait on flags have been marked true. Of course, we can create our own workflows as well. A sample workflow has been provided that creates an out-of-band management settings for VirtualBox and installs CoreOS. We can see this defined by the array of tasks that need to be performed. Using the REST API, we can upload the JSON file to the available workflows. As mentioned previously, a SKU is necessary to determine how a workflow is attached to a piece of infrastructure. A SKU is provided in the samples. Within this sample, we can look that when a piece of hardware is added to the inventory and the product name is VirtualBox, then the install CoreOS workflow that we had previously uploaded to the workflows will be attached. Just as before, we need to upload our SKU to the monorail engine. The last thing to do is query the API to see what SKUs are currently active. As suspected, the SKU we just uploaded is ready for action.
At last, we can now boot a Pixie machine and watch all the action. In VirtualBox, three Pixie machines were created with the monorail rack script that initially deployed the monorail engine. During the boot process, you will see DHCP requests, iPixie, as well as a monorail microkernel that requests an image. At the very end, a fresh CoreOS machine is ready to be used. To learn more about RackHD, visit the GitHub site or collaborate with the project maintainers on Slack. Visit community.emccode.com to get your invite to the Code Community Slack team and go to the RackHD channel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more updates coming to RackHD.